ಸ್ವಾದಯನ್ನಿಹ ಸರ್ವೇಷಂತ್ರಯ್ಯಂತಾರ್ಥಂ ಸುದುರ್ಗ್ರಹ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರಸ ಯೋಗೀಂದ್ರ ತಂ ವಂದೇ ಯಾಮುನಾಹ್ವಯಂ ಯತ್ಪದೋರುಹ್ಯಾನ ವಿಧ್ವಸ್ತ ಶೇಷಕಲ್ಮಷ ವಸ್ತುತಾಪಯಾಹಂ ಯಾಮುನೇಯ ನಮಿ ತಂ ನಮೋ ನಮೋ ಯಾಮುನಾಯ ಯಾಮುನಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಮೋ ನಮೋ ಯಾಮುನಾಯ ಯಾಮುನಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜ್ಞಾನಕರ್ಮಕೆ ನಿಷ್ಠೆ ಯೋಗಲಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಸುಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಆತ್ಮಾನುಭೂತಿ ಸಿದ್ಧ್ಯರ್ಥೆ ಪೂರ್ವಷಟ್ಕೇನ ಚೋದಿತ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ವೆಂಕಟನಾಥಾರ್ಯ ಕವಿತಾರ್ಕಿಕಸರಿ ವೇದಾಂತಾಚಾರ್ಯವರ್ಯೋ ಮೇ ಸನ್ನಿಧತ್ತ ಸದಾ ಹೃದಯ if you want to uh, orally i can uh, tell you the meaning of uh, these three kanyans and then uh, one of them is uh, known to everybody everybody uh, the second is uh, yeah so the second um, so rather i mean uh, in the written form i shall send you soon uh, now uh, coming to the um, Uh, Tanyan of uh, Vedant Deshika as usual. Uh, you can start recording now. And uh, the, uh, yeah, the, the, the most important aspect is um, I, I feel humble um, that is the nature of a Sri Vaishnavite. We call it Naichyanu Sandhanam in Sanskrit. the sort of protocol in english self abnegation lowering oneself uh, to, to the to such an extent that we feel small before others and others must be taken as uh, great people or greater and second point is uh, the bhagavad gita says atmanam uh, uddhare ಆತ್ಮನ ಆತ್ಮನ ಉದ್ಧರೇತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನ ಅವಸಾದಿಯೇತ್ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿಲಿಟಲ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಲಿಫ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ಲಿಫ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದೇರ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಕಾಲ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರೆಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮೀ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಅನಿಯನ್ ಶ್ರೀಮಾನ್ ವೆಂಕಟನಾಥಾರ್ಯ ಕವಿತಾರ್ಕಿಕೇಸರಿ ವೇದಾಂತಾಚಾರ್ಯವರ್ಯೋ ಮೇ ಸನ್ನಿಧತ್ತ ಸದಾ ಹೃದಯ ಇಫ್ ದಿ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೇ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಮೀ ದಟ್ ಇಲ್ ಬಿ ಬೆಟರ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಕೋರಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ಅಫ್ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಐದರ್ ಇನ್ ಮ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆರ್ ಓಪನ್ ಶ್ರೀಮಾನ್ ವೆಂಕಟನಾಥಾರ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀಮಾನ್ ವೆಂಕಟನಾಥಾಯ ಕವಿತಾರ್ಕಿಕೇಸರಿ ಕವಿತಾರ್ಕಿಕೇಸರಿ ವೇದಾಂತಾಚಾರ್ಯವರ್ಯೋ ಮೇ ವೇದಾಂತಾಚಾರ್ಯವರ್ಯೋ ಮೇ ಸನ್ನಿಧತ್ತ ಸದಾ ಕೃತಿ ಸನ್ನಿಧತ್ತ ಸದಾ ಕೃತಿ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಸ್ವಾದಯನ್ ಇಹ ಸರ್ವೇಶಾಂ ಸ್ವಾದಯನ್ ಇತ ಸರ್ವೇಶೋಗೀಂದ್ರೇಂದ್ರೇಂದ್ರೇ ಯಾಮುನಾಹ್ವಯಂ ಯಾಮುನಾ ಹ್ವಯಂ ಅದೇ ಟೋಲ್ ಯು ಬೈ ವಾಟ್ಸ್ಆಪ್ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಒನ್ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ 
Namo Namo Yamunaya. Namo 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 Yamunaya. Yamunaya Namo Namaha. Yamunaya Namo Namaha. Namo Namo Yamunaya. Namo 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 Yamunaya. Namo Namo Yamunaya. Yamunaya Namo Namaha. Yamunaya Namo Namaha. Yatu Pada Amboruha. Yata Pada Pada Amboruha. Diana. 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 Vidvasta. 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 Ashesha. 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 Kalmashaha. 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 Vastutam. 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 Upayatoham. Upayatoham. Yamuneyam. Yamuneyam. Namamitam. Namamitam. But as you said, Siu Vek, Kundar Kidambi must have recited in the other way. There is no hard and fast rule, as I said earlier. But generally, the Swadayan will be the first. You can also say Etpadam Borga as the first one. But generally, the letter Yai may not be the beginning. It can be either A or Sa. And so on. Ma, ma, sa, a. Some of the letters are prescribed for even uh, uh, to start with. Uh, then uh, here uh, we, we go to the second verse of, uh, before going to the second verse of the Gita Sangraha, we will uh, recite also the first one. If uh, all of us can see on the screen, yeah. Swadharma. Swadharma. Jnana Vairagya. Jnana Vairagya. Vairagya. Sadhya Bhakti. Sadhya Bhakti. Sadhya Bhakti. Eka Gocharaha. Eka Gocharaha. Narayana Param Brahma. Narayana Param Brahma. Gita Shastre Samiritaha. Gita Shastre Samiritaha. So go to the second one. So Jnana Karma Asmike Nishthe. Jnana Karma Asmike Nishthe. Yoga Lakshye. Yoga Lakshye Su Samskrite Su Samskrite Atma Sorry, Atma Anubhuti Atma Anubhuti Siddhyarthe Siddhyarthe Purva Shakkena Chodite Purva Shakkena Chodite Chodite so here, um, the first uh, uh, half is almost similar to the first verse. Jnana karmatmike. Jnana, the wisdom. Jnana, the spiritual wisdom. The knowledge of the Brahman. Knowledge of the Almighty. A karma, the action that, leading, that leads to Jnana. And jnana, the knowledge itself, the spiritual wisdom itself, uh, makes us do our duties. So jnana karma is now combined. Then atmike. So we put our soul and heart, heart and soul, we say. So atma is uh, inclusive of. So jnana karma atmike. Nishthe. Nishthe is a strict practice. Nishtha is continuous involvement in these two, namely earning the spiritual wisdom and doing one's own duties. A person is called devout, D-E-V-O-U-T. A devout devotee will have nishtha. Nishtha is a feminine gender word. 
here it is uh, generally in, uh, it's a feminine gender word here it is uh, uh, referring to uh, the because it is an adjective it can be can mean any gender also uh, the la the third line uh, tells you siddhya te therefore all the words end in nitte so sanskrite and siddhya te so here the nitte nitte that tells you the uh, strict adherence to the uh, rules of karma yoga and jnana yoga so jnana <coughs> jnana comes first in the line as the first word but uh, there is a formula in uh, grammar uh, in panini sattadhyayi that the later word will be more important the sutra the formula the aphorism is called uttarottaram baliyasi so what is more important is uh, not gaining spiritual wisdom first initially but uh, doing one's own deeds is first karma is the most important first we are we also discussed saying that uh, the karma should uh, give give us up not we should uh, give up the karma we cannot uh, uh, do I mean be idle and uh, refuse to do the karma and therefore jnan so karma comes first uh, as I mean with the importance the, though it is in the second place uh, karma jnana atmike if you say karma jnana atmike jnana becomes uh, important and more important than karma and we will not uh, do karma we will give up karma so, so karma is a base for um, getting uh, earning the knowledge spiritual knowledge jnana karmatmike nitte the nitta the strict uh, uh, observe observation observation in the sense uh, observing the rules uh, the, the strict observation uh, has its soul both karma and jnana doing good deeds and uh, doing one's own duty just administration in the uh, case of a uh, ruler and so on so charity so many meanings for the word uh, karma In, in the form of dharma karma is another, another uh, uh, synonymous term for dharma also so dharma is also duty the charity the just administration uh, the religion the opinion and then the uh, good deeds so the nishta should include uh, both karma and jnana and uh, these two become the soul of the nitta so when there is nitta and uh, what is what is the aim of these two uh, aspects of uh, nitta yoga lakshya the aim is uh, yoga we have to learn from patanjali maharishi's yoga sutra and it has got eight limbs pranayama pratyahara dharana dhyana and so on uh this this must be the aim of uh, doing good deeds and gaining the spiritual wisdom and once we complete the process of uh, doing good deeds and learning the spiritual wisdom with the aim of yoga yoga is of two kinds again generally yoga is a a mental exercise and physical exercise so vyayamah we say in sanskrit vyayamah is physical exercise mental exercise is disciplining of disciplining of the mind disciplining of the mind so yoga lakshya su sanskrite when it returns it means well refined su means well sanskrite is refined refined in the sense we have improved from our earlier actions and where earlier spiritual wisdom gains uh, combined with yoga as its aim the mental discipline as well as physical discipline lead to the uh, supra vision 
the divine vision of the lord and uh, the next word tells you what do we what do we gain by what is the advantage of uh, these three jnana karma and yoga and yoga can include bhakti also so in the second uh, line yoga can include bhakti and according to sri vaishnava sampradaya it can you include prapatti also so prapatti is the aim along with karma and jnana or you can say third yoga namely uh, bhakti yoga if anybody can practice bhakti yoga uh, he is not prevented from doing so and thirdly i mean the fourth one as you know as we all we know as we all know that it is prapatti sharanagati so that is the aim that is the goal and when it has been uh, achieved almost 99 percent that are only that we say i won't say 100 percent uh, the next comes the advantage the result the end result the phalam the fruit the atma atma anubhuti the atma meaning the individual soul is one with the uh, supreme soul the atma the individual soul enjoys the bliss of the paramatma the uh, anubhuti is only an experience the divine experience the divine experience cannot be said in words even to describe the lord the scriptures uh, fail the scriptures uh, uh, tell their incapability of describing him uh, the even the scriptures with a lot of words because the scriptures are many they are endless in number in spite of the uh, vocabulary that the, the power of vocabulary that they have they cannot describe not even think of the lord completely in, but through their mind yato vacho nivartante aprapya manasasah says the taitri operation so when uh, they want to uh, describe the lord as as he is what you call swarupam and rupam this uh, original form and the natural form so this uh, this description is impossible even by the scriptures the scriptures are the breath exhaled by the lord that's what we say nobody is the author of a scripture the scriptures came out as the breath Mucha kaatri we say in Tamil, prana vayu can say in Sanskrit oxygen. Of course, oxygen is inhaled and carbon dioxide is exhaled. But we are not we are not talking about the scientific aspect of the air. The air the air exhaled by the uh, no from the nostrils of the Lord. The scriptures were formed, and the scriptures from the uh, space that is the air or ether. they were uh, uh, put into black and white in the minds of uh, the sages the sages recorded them orally in voice and therefore uh, atmanubhuti the divine experience um, with the with the um, supreme soul by the individual soul should be the uh, final success siddhi siddhi is success siddhi arthe for the sake of achieving the success arthaha i got lot of meaning arthaha means money arthaha means meaning arthaha means purpose arthaha i can say aim goal destination and so on. so siddhi arthe in order to achieve the success of the divine experience in communion with the Uh, supreme soul by the individual soul when uh, the, the the process is over almost over with the three yogas or the fourth namely prapatti the total surrender so karma yoga jnana yoga and then bhakti yoga uh, this yoga lakshya will include all the four starting with karma and then second is jnana and the third is bhakti fourth is prapatti 
so when they are done well when they are when they have been performed perfectly then uh, this is the this is the quintessence of the six chapters of the bhagavad gita first six chapters of the bhagavad gita so purva shakena we we say purva shakam is the first six earlier six then middle six and then lastly the uh, final six that is how we uh, divide the 18 chapters so purva shakena shak is six shakam is a group of six and a purva section a purva is the earlier former the first six chodite chodite has got a uh, has got two or three meanings uh, chodite is first explained you can say or codified you can say and also uh, chodite is uh, tested you can say or uh, explained described and so on and uh, final final uh, meaning of this chodite of the final word is uh, it has induced it has uh, encouraged an individual soul to work for this uh, four namely karma jnana bhakti and prapatti uh, to make the uh, actions perfect i mean all this all this yoga is perfect uh the first six uh, gives you confidence instills in you the attitude the attitude to, uh, to approach these uh, four yogas you can say sharanagati also prapatti also can be called yoga so again as discipline as it has got five steps as we know uh, or the sixth one being the total surrender and so the uh, now this particular uh, verse uh, is not uh, complete in the uh, sanskrit sentence it continues with the next one mm, because there is no verb here there is no verb here of course the, the word chodite uh, nishte chodite uh, siddhyarthe and so on all these are all uh, what we call uh, it is in locative case maybe i am wrong in pronunciation l o c a t i v e locative case otherwise simply called in sanskrit saptami vibhakti or in tamil it is called the eram vetrame uh, literal translation from sanskrit to tamil uh, saptami vibhakti and in saptami vibhakti we got lot of meanings uh, just like we saw with regard to uh, the some I mean, many meanings of a single word word earlier uh, for example dharma we saw many meanings so also here the locative case word has got many meanings you can say uh, add the letter the words in uh, from english in so in the so in the six uh, verses six chapters sorry six chapters of the bhagavad gita or on we say on then uh, at at then uh, if it is plural it is among so among the six chapters uh, or you can say between two chapters uh, between if it is in dvivachanam in uh, what we call dual number then it will be between then you can say over the six chapters then again uh, uh, above the six, six chapters uh, and, and above the six, six chapters and so on so many meanings but here there is a very peculiar uh, statement of yamunacharya is there is a particular expression in grammar called sati saptami vibhakti when uh, two or more words minimum two or more more number of words uh, are mentioned in or used in saptami vibhakti locative case we have we can add in translation in english when w h e n when and then or in tamil as it is yappozhudu uh, yappozhudu it's not in the form of question it is in the form of the class c l a u s e or phrase p h r a s e so here so the uh, the three words nishthe in the first line susamskrite in the second line 
third Siddhyarthi in the fourth, uh, third line. Of course, Siddhyarthi may not be included. Uh, the last line is Chojite, meaning when, starting the translation by saying when. So when the, uh, when the uh, discipline, Nishte, when the discipline, inclusive of karma and jnana, and with the aim of uh, yoga, namely either bhakti and prapatti, when they have been refined to samskrite, when all these four have been have been refined, well refined to samskrite. So in order to achieve the success, there here the third uh, line uh, is not of saptami bhakti. Sorry. So. Uh, it is for the sake of it is for the sake of achieving the success of the divine experience between the individual soul and the supreme soul. And the lastly, the the first six chapters have been uh, codified. Rather, uh, this is the, the so the sentence will be complete will be in the uh, third verse. If it is complete in the third verse. It is called yugma. So again, if it goes on to the uh, third, again another uh, third, third verse, again fourth verse, and fifth verse, and so on. If five verses are clustered together and there is only one word, it is called kulaka. Uh, that is, of course, by the way. Uh, but we have names for uh, a cluster of three verses, a cluster of four verses, and a cluster of five and more. Uh, if, it, if, there, if there is a cluster of five and more, uh, every name is Kulaka. Here, uh, so in the third line, you will find that Prakit Titaha, that the, the sentence completes. Last word is Prakit Titaha. So we already saw in the first word, Sami Titaha, well said, well spoken, well described, well explained. In the first verse, and then now it is Prakirti Taha in the third. So we will take up the third verse uh, next time if you want. Then uh, so uh, this comes to a uh, stop when I say in the um, you take the second one. So in the first group of six, six chapters are enjoined, enjoined in the sense. And the rule has been prescribed for the sake of success in realizing the experience of the self. The disciplines of karma and jnana, which are the vision of the self, uh, the, it has been translated as vision of the self, yoga lakshya. And because it is a physical discipline and also ment as well as mental discipline. So we have the vision of self for their objective, they namely siddhi, and which are well refined through samskriti. Now over to the participants for comments, additions, opinions, and understanding. So, Swami, um, yeah, okay. go ahead. Swami, I just wanted to um, ask. You said that yoga lakshya means um, it, it will describe all four processes, uh, karma, jnana, bhakti, and prapatti. Um, but prapatti is not considered a yoga process, is it? Like the others. The others are considered yoga, but prapatti itself is not a yoga process, is it? Please correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't. Ah, I'm not prapati sure. is also yoga, as uh, as you know. Uh, it involves pratikulya varjanam, uh, anukulya sankalpaha. Uh, the uh, the other I mean, car, these two are. That means you are avoiding your uh, bad actions or actions which are um, prohibited by the scriptures. Therefore, uh, it, it involves action. So it is what we call physical action. Physically, you are prohibited from doing the deeds uh, unprescribed by the scriptures. So, uh, therefore, there is all yoga in, in the form of physical discipline. And the Anukulya Sankalpaha, the, the decision to do the uh, things which are already enjoined in the scriptures, 
again it is mental discipline i mean it's also a, sorry um, physical discipline uh, physical action so again so it's called yoga whereas karpanyam feeling helplessness feeling the helplessness in mental uh, attitude mental disposition and therefore karpanyam and of course choosing the uh, protector gopthrutva varanam uh, somebody uh, exchange the uh, two steps as number one is uh, rakshishati iti mahavishwasa then gopthrutva varanam normally it cannot be so first you choose the protector and then only believe him have full faith in him uh, you cho choosing the protector also involves your physical action and also mental the second and the next step of uh, after choosing the toys of the protector you start uh, having faith in him full faith in him that is also your mental disposition so this involves all kinds of yoga physical as well as mental discipline is called yoga yoga the very word as you know already very well more than me that yoga is what we call joining so what to join the the final goal is join the two souls individual and the supreme so in uh, yuga you know the word yuga yuga in sanskrit meaning joining the joint you can say link plus also yuga means two yuga means two in sanskrit yuga means two so two uh, objects or two entities join together so from the from the root yuga or yuj the yoga came came so yoga, yoga uh, in, in another meaning in ordinary sense it also means luck l u c k uh, fortune you can also say uh, you have that means uh, some some good has happened to you and you are now associated with that good fortune that is also in a yoga Uh, Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita says, "Yoga karma su kaushalam." Uh, when your actions are uh, in unison with your attitude, when your physical actions are corresponding to your mental disposition, that is also called yoga. Uh, suppose I don't like this Gita to Sangraha, but still I want to attend class and then. Uh, I, I want to try to try to love the subject and and make myself familiar with this. Uh, that is the first when the initially we have some reluctance, indifference, disinterestedness, and so on. So that is not the yoga here. The yoga is the full yoga, as you said. The sus as you, it is as it is said here. Sus samskrite. Initially we will be uh, aloof. Uh, we don't feel one. I mean, in heart of hearts, that this this subject is very important. Understanding Gita, understanding the uh, purpose of Gita, the purpose of Gita, and so on, is very is not very important to us in, in life, because it says karmenge vadi karate maapale to kada jana. Nobody is uh, following uh, uh, is very strictly in hundred percent karmenge vadi karate. we we expect uh, some fruits uh, from our own actions again again it is not uh, bad to uh, aspire for moksha and no it is not bad to uh, get the divine the desire to get the divine experience between the individual soul and the supreme soul and so on so uh, yoga prapatti is also another yoga i'm trying but to that, just prove that but that linking that that becoming one that that you yeah, here is becoming one we and we of actually shivaita sampradaya doesn't accept uh, the oneness of the individual and the right. supreme soul in some sense in some aspect. that that's what i was just saying is only in in quality but not in quantity yeah to become yujya with the lord correct Right. And with respect to the verse Anukulatya Sankalpa that you just quoted, uh, you said that actually it's the other way around with respect to Goptripte um, Varanam Tata. That um, the, it's actually the other way around. Is it that you have the Paramanam verse 
where the these two lines are actually switched around? Is that what you meant? Uh, I, would, I would like Keshav Jal Swami to uh, respond to him uh, in that uh, some some words are not very I mean not, not heard by my own uh, weaknesses. But what is what is asking Swami is um, you're saying that there are two steps. Which are which are uh, transposed, which Jumbled, are, yeah. Yes. So, can you? Is there? Is that explained in some commentary, or that's uh, the your your point is logically you have to know somebody before you can have uh, faith in them. I saw recently a book saying that Maha Rakshishati the Maha as the fourth step and fifth step will be. Go through to our choice of the protector, but that is not the uh, right presentation. Right, that's not correct because you can't you can't expect somebody to save you if you don't know who that person is. You have to have faith in that right. person first. Right. So I I think it's just logical. The point is it's logical that way. So another, they, another thing is though, in, though you in, don't know the protector earlier, though you don't know the protector earlier. Uh, you have some uh, faith in your own uh, process of action, karma, jnana, bhakti, and uh, prapati. There, uh, you have full faith in the uh, some somebody called the Lord. Uh, for example, the scriptures, scriptures uh, mostly give the names of uh, nature. Uh, say, for example, Indra, Varuna, uh, Vayu, uh, Agni. Uh, so, so many, uh, especially the God of Rain, Parjanya Devata. Uh, these are all, uh, of course, uh, as we say, uh, Antaryami is Lord Narayana, and therefore, but uh, generally in the scriptures are more dominant names of uh, demigods, and uh, one of them can be taken as the choice, I mean, the choice of protector. And uh, any anybody who could, uh, you say here in as in this world, you you take a godfather, you have a, a guide, philosopher, mentor, friend, philosopher, and guide. Uh, you depend on him. And again, I we always we always said uh, Acharya, the preceptor itself, he himself is God. So there's no need to approach God. Uh, who, who call you? Whom we call Almighty and uh, this. Now, so in that way, uh, maybe uh, the faith comes first, to Lakshmi the Mahajasa. But as you said, uh, it is illogical. So, in this in this sense, we can also, as well as accepting uh, Bhakti Yoga as being mentioned here, although it's not directly mentioned, and Property Yoga also being mentioned, uh, but not directly. Uh, Acharya Abhimana also can be understood here because, uh, as you say, in these in the five steps, there has to be some faith, and the faith in, initially comes in the Acharya. Yeah. So uh, uh, I had a question about this. Uh, you you gave the uh, the rule from Panini Grammar about the second or the last the last uh, word in a compound word in Sanskrit is more important than the, than the first words. Uttarottaram baliyasi. Yes. So, so, uh, so that's, that is, that is the same, just like when we, just like when we put together the names of many deities, uh, normally, uh, we put, uh, Sri, uh, Sita Lakshmana Bharata Satrugna Hanumat Sameta Sri Ramachandra Swami Ne Namaha. So right. Ramachandra Swami Ne Namaha. Ramachandra is coming last, but he's the more important because he's the Lord himself. Yeah, so, very nice, good example. Yeah. So um, my question is that the last, sometimes when we break up a samas, when we break up a Sanskrit compound, it'll be broken into smaller compounds. So, so when you break a, a big compound into a smaller compound, 
if it's a Dwanva compound or it, it, it contains many, many uh, uh, individual words in, in it, as when we break it into a smaller compound, that rule is also there for the smaller compounds also. Yeah, so, even for two-worded compounds. Because the minimum is two words. Minimum, minimum is two words. Minimum is two words. So, uh, so can we say though, in a in a in a compound with, like I just gave, Sita Lakshmana Bharata Sadhugna Hanamat Sameta, like this, in, uh, does it mean that there is actually an order that uh, that uh, the first word, the first word, or the first person mentioned is le least important? And the and the last was more important. Is it yeah. is a is it a uh, progression? Because yeah. because it, uh, I find it difficult to believe that Sita is is less important than Hanuman. Okay. So I, I shall explain this. Uh, I mean, according to my own understanding, um, see, when you say Sita Lakshmana, so Lakshmana is more important than Sita. Because he is called Kainkarya Sriman. And the Ramayana incidents show that uh, Lakshmana has been scolded by um, I mean, uh, Sita, unfortunately, in a context. And then, of course, she suffered the, for the, I mean, as a consequence of her own folly, mistake. And then and Lakshmana ha was doing. Uh, uh, what you call blemishless service. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Sita was with him as uh, as a wife uh, in the forest, whereas Lakshmana left uh, left uh, left his wife uh, in the uh, kingdom Ayodhya, and then he came and uh, served him so through day and night, day in and day out. He was serving. So again, uh, you know, then Lakshmana. I mean, uh, Lakshmana is, is called uh, what we call Dasatva, Dasatva, the, the slavery with him. Bharata, Bharata, even, even without the aspiration uh, towards riches, he did not want to covet the uh, property of Rama, and that was more important than even uh, serving. Uh, giving up the uh, desire for wealth is very difficult, and therefore Bharata did it. And Bharata uh, uh, is, uh, uh, you can say, uh, Bhagavata. The, he, he is a servant of God. He uh, stayed in Nandigrama, placed his uh, Dhamma's divine feet on the throne, and ruled for uh, 14 years uh, better than Rama. Rama's Rajyam, Rama, Rama's kingdom had uh, two uh, defects. One, there was a there was a death of a, a very small baby uh, that happened in the kingdom of Rama, and then one uh, uh, as as we say the fourth Varna person started doing tapas. So the, the, he started performing penance. So these two uh, deviations happened in Rama Rama Rajya, the kingdom of Rama, whereas. Uh, but in Bharata's kingdom, nothing untoward happened. Nothing uh, unprescribed in a, an administration happened. So that is better. And then, so fourthly, uh, take Shatrugna, though he is mentioned in just two or four lines in the whole of Ramayana of 24,000 slokas, uh, he, is, he is called uh, um, Bhagavat, uh, Bhagavat. Bhagavatasya Bhagavata. He is a slave of the slave. Uh, dasyam. Bhagavata Dasyam. Bhagavata Dasyam is not very, very important, but Bhagavata Dasyam is very important. Satrugna served Bharata. He did not serve directly the God. Neither Rama nor Sita. And don't say, that this is a wrong order because of the age. Bharata is the eldest among the other three. Bharata comes next to Rama in age. Uh, Lakshmana comes third. Shatrana comes fourth. 
but it is not according to age according to the merit and uh, now throwing all these four into uh, oblivion hanuma uh, hanuman uh, is even now though their incarnations are over bharata from uh, the incarnation of conch chaturugna has the incarnation of the discus sudarshana chakram uh, mahalakshmi as sita and uh, lord narayana as rama hanuman is still alive chiranjeevi yatra yatra raghunatha kirtanam tatra tatra kritamastaka anjali bashpavari paripurna lochanam marutim namata rakshasantakam this is the uh, parayana shloka before ramayana wherever uh, the name of rama is recited he is there with a the bow of head and with uh, with of course the folded palms kritamastaka anjali but then his eyes are filled up with uh, tears of devotion uh, paripurna rochana then um, uh, rakshasa antakam his prowess is also very great uh, uh, of course he felt ashamed when he uh, gave a, a fist to ravana uh, and when ravana i mean ravana asked him to hit him hard uh, anuman Uh, said that you hit me first. Now, Ramana refused. Ah, you are just a small monkey. I can uh, I cannot obey. You. So uh, then uh, uh, when uh, my, the, when Anuman attacked him, Ra- Ravana did not uh, uh, die. Uh, now he stood the test. Uh, he was little shaken. That's all. Whereas Anuman had lot of. Uh, pain by getting a uh, hit by ravana so though I mean, all these are all there uh, hanuman becomes the best devotee of ram so the uh, what do you what do you see the, there is a, a gradation a increasing gradation ascending order from sita lakshmana bharata shatrughna hanumat then samet uh, ramachandra parabrahmani this is what i understand But if I am wrong, I I need to be corrected. So that's very nice. So, so here, uh, nishte, nishte. The word nishte means uh, to be fixed or to be uh, to be steady. Discipline. Nishta is discipline. Discipline. Yes. So uh, sometimes we see that that uh, people who take to some people who are taking to acharya abhimana or or even to property as a as the as an upaya don't have much discipline sometimes they seem like they don't have much discipline uh so he but here it's saying that there has to be discipline uh you mean the discipline there has to there has to yeah there has to be there has to be discipline uh I mean the, the uh, I mean uh in the Ramacharma sloka Lord Rama says all you have to do is just simply say that uh you are my, you know I am yours uh one time it doesn't seem like uh, there's much discipline there this uh this uh gyana karmatmike nishte is uh, it seem of course you're you're saying it's a prerequisite but we don't always see that there's such a prerequisite in uh draupadi sharanagati uh or or even vibhishana sharanagati or even gajendra sharanagati how 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 much uh uh gyana gyana karmatmike nishte is there is there in those uh in those sharanagatis doesn't seem like there's a lot of nishta there um it's just a uh, uh, recently re- recently i understood the some uh, how how uh, vishwavasu uh, gave birth to the three sons ravana kumbhakarna and uh, vibhishan um but i mean it's only a, i mean uh, there is no pramana which for which i think i have read it i, I don't have the pramana but uh, when vibhishana was born he was born with the right attitude uh, 
uh, whereas these other two were demonic in nature even from the very birth onwards. And uh, Kubera, you know, Kubera was also a brother of Ravana. And Kubera uh, joined the service of the Lord. In the, in the sense, joined the God's group and became uh, one of the uh, I mean, one of the leaders again. I mean, uh, one of the what you call big uh, palakaha, the direction leader, uh, and under the of course rule of Indra. Uh, with this background, uh, we will say uh, we have not seen much uh, in, uh, karma, jnana, uh, bhakti yoga of Vibhishana. Uh, but Vibhishana uh, must have all these qualities of this yoga. He, was, he had also Nishtha. And perhaps uh, he did it through Hanuman. When uh, Hanuman was uh, uh, visiting Sri Lanka, uh, Vibhishana recommended an, an ambassador must not be uh, harmed. The advice was to Ravana. And Ravana despised his advice. He refused to accede to Vibhishana's request. But Vibhishana was telling always uh, the right uh, way of uh, handling an ambassador. Uh, that, that, is, uh, that is again uh, Dasya Bhakti, you can say uh, Bhagavata Bhakti. Uh, so here, uh, whatever Vibhishana did was uh, right. Uh, so, so can you, so can uh, can you say that this uh, this uh, Jnana Karma it may it may have it may be there in a Purva Janma in a previous birth of a person like. You say that uh, Vibhishana, from his very birth, he had the right attitude. So some people, some people, they have they have these prerequisites for property, right? Prerequisites for for even for as we know, there are prerequisites for karma yoga, jnana yoga, bhakti yoga. Uh, even even for Acharya Abhimana, there has to be some shraddha. There has to be some faith. So some of, sometimes this prerequisites we don't see in this birth, but they may be there from the previous birth. Is that possible? Uh, uh, to answer your question, our our, uh, our development of our attitude towards uh, surrender has been uh, sown the seed uh, from the very birth onwards, from the very first birth. But uh, now, now that I, we are very fortunate as a human being to uh, understand uh, what is what and uh, what is the importance of uh, the total surrender and so on, and this is only a fruition of all your merits in the previous birth. It is not a question of in a, just in the previous birth you had started developing this right attitude and so on. So, uh, from, from a number of births, from a number of births, uh, this, this, uh, uh, that is again due to the blessing of the God. Slowly, we have come to this uh, human birth. And we have uh, come to the uh, fruition of, of our uh, uh, past merits. We won't, we won't call them badly like uh, uh, Sanchita Papam, uh, Prarabdha Papam and uh, Agami Papam. Instead of that, uh, you can say Agami Punyam, Sanchita Punyam, and Prarabdha Punyam. So that right. will be a collective, a, a collective action uh, leading to uh, this kind of prapatti. Of course, it cannot happen in one day uh, as a human being. The suddenly, the, in this birth, you, you develop an attitude because of your uh, uh, association with the uh, Nacharya and so on. That uh, the the very uh, the very association which you have today uh, must have must have been uh, there earlier. But uh, uh, w w like you said, so from so many births, uh, but we can't we can't actually say from the first birth because there is no first birth. If we if we say that there the the jivatman has anadi karma, anadi uh, uh, beginningless karma then uh, there is no real first birth, correct? That is right. 
so uh, so yeah. some somehow somehow in the nature of the soul there is some uh, the Lord has has given some uh, some aspect to the nature of the soul that to make that soul each and every soul will eventually uh, seek the Lord seek to seek to make yeah. themselves perfect by surrendering to the Lord. So there is something in every soul that, that makes him do that. Because, because the Sattva Rajas Tamas, these um, gunas, qualities, exist in all of us, in all the living beings, not only human beings, in all the living beings. You find a dog very uh, grateful to its master. Um, so many, so many, uh, the, uh, the cow, uh, can we say in, uh, general, generally, the, the cow can find its own calf among many calves. Uh, the calf can find its mother, uh, you know, the entire crowd of big cows. So again, uh, all these are all by samskara, the previous but. Uh, the latent impressions of the previous birth, which is in the subconscious mind. And again, a child, a human child, uh, sucks the breast of uh, the mother. Uh, that itself, we say, is a practice already uh, done in the previous birth. Which previous birth, we may not know. And again, as you said, anadi karma, we are not able to understand the, uh, the anadi janma and anadi karma also. When we don't know, it's not possible for us to discuss on the, those lines also. So, uh, uh, this word, Atmanu, Atmanubhuti, uh, this, ref, this can also refer to, it refers to all the different uh, perfections, all the different uh, mokshas, the, the four types of moksha, Swarupya, Samipya, uh, Sharsti and uh, Salokya, but uh, uh, can it also refer to Kaivalya or to the un understanding of Brahman Anub Anub Anubhava? I mean, ca can we say, it, or can somebody say this also uh, can refer to Kaivalya or to to uh, Sayuja? Uh, we have we have given some terms like uh, Kaivalya Moksha. Um, we have been discussing that it is a Kaivalya is only an Avantara Moksha in an intermediary uh, salvation. Uh, and uh, the Atmanubhuti, of course, I uh, did not mention to you, which you have already, we have now you have added uh, correctly, namely uh, the Atmanubhuti includes Sarupya, Salokya, uh, Samipya, and so on. And, uh, is only an enjoying the bliss of the God, uh, the bliss of bliss in the presence of God, and when He is uh, in proximity, anyway, He is very closer to you than before. Uh, our our mind, our heart has got Him as antaryami, um, but still uh, we are able to turn uh, our vision into inner self, and we could understand Him. When we understand him, we, we get what we call uh, Anubhuti. Otherwise, we call uh, realization. The Atma Anubhuti is only the realization of the Brahman. Uh, in, the, in, the sen in the sense of uh, his greatness is being experienced. His greatness in controlling the world, creating the world, sustaining the world, and getting it dissolved. And all his skills. And you find the big list in the Sri Ranga Gadyam. Uh, so the first, uh, it's only a small list by Sri Swami Ramanuja Acharya. Uh, it is just in uh, A4 size, it's only one, one page and one quarter. One page and quarter. You can say it's simply one page, one uh, long page. Uh, it's very easy to read also. At the same time, to understand the greatness. Uh, the understanding of the greatness of the Lord itself is the what we call Atman Supremacy of the Lord, the greatness of the Lord, enjoying His uh, uh, auspicious, endless number of auspicious, auspicious attributes 
that itself is a um, pleasure, the divine pleasure. So, is there is there any indication here in in this uh, in this verse, especially in in the in the third line, atmano uh, atmano bhuti siddhyarte? Uh, is there any indication here that it must this can only be achieved uh, after the fall of the body, videha mukti, as as or can it? It's it's it doesn't seem to exclude the idea of jivan mukti here. So, is, is, um, is Jeevan Mukti? We have to refer to Shankaracharya's uh, commentary on the Bhagavad Gita in the in the matter of Videha Mukti and uh, Jeevan Mukti. And it seems they have accepted. For example, Ramana Maharishi's concept is uh, acceptance of Jeevan Mukti as the as a concept of uh, Advaita. Uh, whereas uh, in this world, in this world, very world itself. Whereas uh, uh, we must uh, go deep into Ramanuja's, Ramanuja Acharya's uh, Gita Bhashyam to understand whether it is Jivan Mukti or no Jivan Mukti. So, but there's no indication in this verse. Uh, uh, no Ramanuja Acharya is not indicating whether Jivan Mukti is a, is a possibility or not. Right, right. Okay. Well, there's only a... Just a two-line verse, uh, 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 giving out the essence, quintessence of the six chapter. It cannot be said in. Uh, and is there? It, it, it was Yamunacharya? Was he the first person to divide the divide the chap the chapters of the Gita up into into hexads, into into sets of sets of six chapters, or is this just a natural thing? Uh, are there any other comment uh, commentaries or 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 persons who have who have understood these three uh, divisions of the Gita? Uh, naturally, because Nathamuni uh, gave uh, a book called the Yoga Ragasyam, and that is uh, now not extant. Uh, the problem is we lost it. And then uh, we, we, we do not know other works of uh, Nathamuni. Uh, in, in our Sampradaya, Yamanacharya becomes the first to, to refer to the uh, abridgment of meaning of Gita, Bhagavad Gita. So, uh, but outside of uh, Sri Sampradaya, in uh, uh, Shankara Sampradaya and the Advaitins or other comment, uh, other commentaries on Bhagavad Gita, uh, is there any in indication to your knowledge in any other commentaries about this uh, division of into into three sets of six chapters? Uh, there must be some books uh, which uh, uh, condense uh, Shankaracharya's uh, commentary on Bhagavad Gita, but uh, uh, I am not very much familiar with them. Uh, okay, so uh, I had another question about the different commentaries on Bhagavad Gita. This is, yeah. a, this is a very short commentary on Bhagavad Gita, giving only the essence of, of Bhagavad Gita. But... Um, there are so many commentaries. It is said that uh, Hanuman was uh, has has written uh, Paisacha Basha, uh, Paisacha uh, commentary wow. on Bhagavad Gita, and that was the first uh, commentary on Bhagavad Gita because he was on the flag of Arjuna, and uh, he as a prize chitta for being above Lord Krishna during the Gita Upadesh, he has given this uh, commentary on Bhagavad Gita, but the uh, do, has any, do you study, do, is any Vaishnava studying this, this Basha of, of Hanuman? Paisacha um, Basha? So, so far, I have not heard so. And if it is a goblin language, definitely people would have, been, would have avoided it. No, it's in Sanskrit. It is there, it's there in the, that, uh, that 11, 11 commentary book that I, that I uh, gave you. Yeah. It is one that it is one which is given there, but uh, uh, m mostly, of course, in Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, the commentaries on Bhagavad Gita are are by uh, Ramanujacharya and uh, and and Vedanta Deshika has done a gloss on his uh, Gita Basha uh, uh, of Yakyana. And uh, are there any other commentaries on Bhagavad Gita in uh, by Sri Vaishnava Acharyas? Uh, yeah, uh, one uh, recent. Uh, 
uh, his name is Tirukkallam Narasimha Raghavacharya, uh, but he has given he has given the discourses in Tamil, and that has been compiled uh, in three volumes, uh, each has having six chapters. He is also dividing the Bhagavad Gita into six chapters each, and then uh, he. Uh, um, titled it as uh, Gita Saram, Gita Saram. Uh, of course, I, I went through it for the sake of doing a PhD, helping a person, a, a boy to get a PhD. And uh, what I understood from his Gita Saram uh, is only a repetition of what Swami uh, Vedanta Deshika said. Uh, and uh, it seems that he was very popular in uh, as a discourse giver and uh, those who heard him loved his discourses uh, and uh, one gentleman uh, was an avid listener uh, has recorded it in his mind uh, and uh, put it in black and white in tamil in three volumes as a devotee of trikkalam narasimha raghavacharya swami uh, he lived uh, very recently. Uh, I have seen him. I have seen him. Uh, so he uh, he is also a sambandhi of uh, uh, the great scholar called Mukkur Lakshmi Narasimhacharya Swami, who was in uh, Mattapalli in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, a very resourceful, uh, uh, a person with the Siddhi, Siddhis. Uh, uh, the Siddhi, the Ashtama Siddhi is the eight types of uh, skills that uh, yoga uh, helps you to achieve and so on. And uh, the Tirukkalam Swami uh, was very, very famous in his days. And um, many, many people, it seems, liked his discourses, uh, flocked to his uh, place to hear him. Uh, and, but I find uh, uh, nothing new, no new interpretations given. It's only a customary and uh, habitual for a, any Sri Vaishnava uh, commentary, and just like any other Sri Vaishnava commentary. Nothing special about it. And I, I just give you one example, but uh, there are uh, now, now there is an interpretation of. Uh, the principles of management from the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, so in that sense, uh, we can compare the actions of Arjuna or the, uh, all the Pandavas and uh, the advice of Lord Krishna and his interference and we can deduce some uh, management uh, principles uh, from the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, and can, they, they are very, uh, it's very uh, difficult to apply them uh, in uh, practical situations of today. I don't know. Uh, it is applicable, then some people say. Um, but still, uh, we have to see some correlation between our today act, today's activity and uh, and then the 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 base behind the fundamental principle behind the actions of the people, characters of Mahabharata, uh, especially Pandavas and so on. Uh, but, but again, it's only, a, it's only an attraction uh, to the audience to say that uh, the, there are management principles. Uh, and even in the case of Mahabharata, we say everything else found in this world is found in Mahabharata. Whatever is not found in the world is not found in Mahabharata. Yes. So, can, so can, can I ask also that uh, sometimes um, sometimes we have uh, shastras like Adhyatma Ramayana, and uh, the, it, it it is an explanation of Ramayana which is less literal and more allegorical or more uh, uh, more uh, more speaking about the philosoph the philosophical meaning rather than understanding it in a literal way. So with Bhagavad Gita. Many, especially Advaitins, they have uh, interpreted Bhagavad Gita as an allegory or as, as, as not as a, as a factual uh, history. So some people, they may even give a commentary on Bhagavad Gita. They may say, 
it doesn't matter whether Krishna or Arjuna actually existed or or spoke. Uh, th what what is very important is the is the essence of Bhagavad Gita, the 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 the, the, uh, the instructions that it gives for humanity and for for all of us. So uh, I just wanted to know in Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, there are there any acharyas who are who are more emphasizing the allegorical meaning or the the uh, doctrinal meaning rather than the literal meaning of Bhagavad Gita uh, and uh, explaining things like uh, the five horses and some people because of the Advaitins they say Kurukshetra is the body and the five horses are the senses and Arjuna is the Atman and Krishna is the Paramatman and like this they give some allegorical meaning and they they don't necessarily believe that Kurukshetra is a place north of Delhi and uh, in India, they they give it all a very allegorical meaning. So I just wanted to know in Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, any acharyas are speaking more like this and less literally about Bhagavad Gita. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I have I have not come across, but uh, there should be some uh, allegorical uh, uh, interpretation of the Bhagavad Gita by the Sri Vaishnava preceptor. So, so you uh, because think it's even possible. the case of first verse, Dharma Kshetre Kuru Kshetre, uh, the Kshetre Kshetre Dharma Kuru, that will be another interpretation. In each uh, uh, holy place, you always do good things, you do your duty. So, Kshetre Kshetre, in every holy place, uh, Dharma Kuru. And it will be very interesting if we read uh, Ramanuja's, Ramanuja Acharya's Gita Bhashyam um, because uh, his interpretations are uh, deviating from Shankaracharya's first number one. Number two is uh, uh, he makes it very interesting also. The presentation is so nice that we tend to read Bhagavad Gita Bhashyam. Uh, and of course, many people follow Ramanuja Acharya's version. They, uh, the allegorical uh, uh, interpretation, uh, uh, just like Adhyatma Ramayana, uh, there are so many Ramayana, the Ananda Ramayana, uh, and so on. Um, uh, even, even with regard to uh, Valmiki Ramayana, of course, Valmiki Ramayana doesn't say openly these. Uh, allegorical principles, but uh, generally the 10 heads of Ravana, Ravana are to be considered as 10 Indriyas, 10 uh, uh, sense organs. Jiva, Jivatma is Sita, Rama, Rama is the Paramatma, Anuman is the Acharya who links the individual soul with the Paramatma. Even, this, yeah, even, are, uh, even my, underst my understanding was uh, in the Ramayana, that uh, Hanuman is Hanuman is the acharya, and and he gives uh, Hanuman gives the ring, the mudra of Rama to Sita to prove that he is coming from Rama, uh, and the the mudra or, or the ring of Sita represents the Astakshara mantra or the or the Diksha mantra which is given to the jiva. So there's there's so much uh, uh, allegorical meaning in in the Ramayana. So just like that, I just was wondering whether the allegorical interpretation of the Gita is there by Sri Vaishnavacharyas also. There must be some, we have to search for such allegorical explanations to Bhagavad Gita also. Now that you have said, I now, uh, this this comes to my mind, Mudra, the, the ring given by, uh, given through Hanuman, is the Samashrayana Pasita. Is the Samashrayana, yes, yes. yes. So if anybody else has any questions right. or comments, please just unmute him. Any, any other participant has got some, uh, some facts to add? Or? Uh, it seems one more uh, has joined today by name Malini. So, welcome to comments, uh, reviews. 
and your your uh, uh, your interest in uh, being continuing to hear i have interest mama i'm looking forward um, so just want to know the meaning of the stotrams and um, but i assure you i assure you you all uh, that uh, because uh, to, to, tomorrow and day after tomorrow we don't uh, uh, use the class for gita arth sangraha uh, one dr m a arwar will be taking your uh, taking the session tomorrow according to keshav swami and oh, and right. then uh, sunday is a holiday for the zoom session uh, by the by monday uh, I, i would like to go through deeply swami uh, deshika's commentary on gitaarth uh, sangraha as gitaarth oh. sangraha raksha and then if there are some new ideas uh, i will i will put through uh, in this session so welcome again tomorrow with the tanian uh, kavitar kike samhaya kalyana gunashalini shrimate venkateshaya vedanta gurave namaha kavitar kike samhaya kalyana gunashalini श्रीमते वेंकटेशाय वेदातगुरव नम